commuters you have in this country. Thank God for the subway. You took the subway? Oh, well, I prefer to walk, of course, but it's a mess out there today. I could, I could have gotten you a car service. Now, what can I get you? Uh, coffee? Tea? I know the tea won't live up to your standards. Uh, coffee for me, thanks. Oh, Miss Teschmacher, could you bring me some coffee for Miss Saunders? Thank you. So, we've talked about the situation a little, so you do have the background. So our client wishes to launch a new chain of upmarket furniture and houseware shops, just like he did back in the 80s with such as Flash. And he hasn't lost his nerve, he still has enormous financial resources, and he has a cohort of well-moneyed investors who are willing to follow him anywhere, almost. You know, he has that, uh, that, that luck, that talent. I know he's going to do it again. But, as you know, we do have this tiny little problem. Well, we certainly want to help if we can. So the broad outline of what needs to be done is clear to us, or to me at least. But I just want to make sure that the medicine is as easy to swallow as we can make it. Hmm. Well, from what you wrote in your email, I think I get the gist of the problem and, of course, your incisive solution to it. <laughs> I know John Saltmarsh, your client, is well along in his campaign to put uh, Saltmarsh inside his new project on the map in five, six different countries in the shortest time possible. That's right. And the money's there, both his own and his movie star friend's money. Yes, no problem. Mm -hmm. But from what you told me on the phone, the Mallorcan furniture factories have become a rather large problem. I gather... Saltmarsh relied on some of his old friends and junior execs to take care of and set up um, labor and regulatory details. I guess they didn't anticipate being duped by a local swindler. No, well, up to a point. I mean, it uh, wasn't actually a simple swindle. This man, Juan Palmer, he did, he overplayed his hand a bit, but we were not entirely incautious in dealing with him. Oh, I'm sorry. So it wasn't as bad as I thought. Well, no, the current situation is pretty bad, but it's not beyond redemption. Hmm. So what is Saltmarsh going to do to put this behind him? The Saltmarsh team, above all, wishes to put a lid on the bad news, hmm. which, as I say, is not really bad news. But with the campaign to spread the stores and the online merchandising seamlessly across Europe and America without any signs of stress, we feel that a few judicial payments can be made. Not bribes, of course, but just to settle the legitimate claims of a few Moluccan unions and to pay the Moluccan regulatory penalties. So nothing too dramatic, but we do want to take care of it as soon as possible so we can just move on. How much? $90 million. So it's um, not really that much money. Well, we can't make a contribution, but... How else can we help? Oh, very funny. Uh, well, we've made our decision on what we need to do, but I do believe that there are some tax consequences, which is why I hired your top draw firm. Thanks for the kind words. We'll try to deserve your high opinion of us. So, um, structurally, the problem is odd. Saltmarsh and his co-investors don't actually own the factory or the company that owns the factory. They don't even have a formal contract with this company. But they do have instead the option to buy all of the stock of the company at a price set by uh, a complicated formula. Now the, the details of the option aren't relevant here. Mallorca is part of Spain but it does have an autonomous government. So um, it turns out that because of some contracts that the company had with suppliers it can't be taken over so the stock is worthless. Now at any rate the um, the company is starting to blame us for the factory's lack of profits when we didn't order as much as we'd, uh, well, not promised, but hoped that we would. That doesn't sound good. Uh, well, bottom line is we're going to pay this company a lot of money, almost all of the $90 million. And I guess the question is uh, whether you can deduct it. Exactly. Well, look, if you used any of the money to pay for fines and penalties that Saltmarsh or any of his employees owes, it's probably not deductible. But if the fines and penalties aren't those of the payer, that may be different. But that would require 
a close analysis. The fines and penalties are less than one million. The rest is to pay claims of the company and the employees. So the company is claiming 80 million against a contract it has with Saltmarsh, and then the employee union is claiming 10 million, and that's prepayment for potential discharge lump sum payments to employees who may lose their jobs if, well, I, I should say, when the company folds. Well, I won't even ask why Saltmarsh is considering paying those claims, because I know they would only be good against the company. Presumably, you're giving them the money to prevent this uh, problem from becoming a news story. Right again. So I guess, the qu so the question is whether Saltmarsh and his co-investors can deduct the part of the $89 million that isn't fines and penalties. That deduction might be worth 40% of $89 million, roughly $36 million. That would be money worth saving, right? Yes, and it would be worth a lavish fee to your firm. You know, I have a few questions, if you don't mind. Um, how far along is the project of the worldwide chain opening? How many stores are there already? How many stores will there be? Do uh, Saltmarsh and his co-investors own them directly? Are they incorporated? And how have they funded them so far? Have they put their own money in these chain stores, or does the invested money come from other store owners who just pay Saltmarsh and his co-investors a fee for the privilege of investing? Uh, we consider the project already half launched. There are already three stores in the Far East. We have one in um, Tokyo, one in Shanghai, one in Singapore, and two in Europe, one in London and one in Stockholm. Um, they're doing fairly well, um, but really the success or failure of the entire operation really depends upon the launch into the U.S. So Mr. Saltmarsh owns everything under uh, through corporations or the local equivalent in each one of these places. So he owns stock in five entities that actually own the stores, but he intends to own the U.S. stores directly, so they won't be incorporated. So he is only a shareholder in these stores and intends to be the sole proprietor of quite a few more. Mm -hmm. Is he a U.S. citizen? He's a British citizen, but he has a green card and he lives in the U.S. for tax purposes. So that means that all the same tax rules, as far as these transactions are concerned, apply to him as would apply to U.S. citizens? Yes, I'm sure I knew that. The IRS will say he is just effectively starting operations in the U.S. and not engaged in the trade or business of the already open stores abroad because he is only a shareholder and an officer. But he definitely intends to unify the stores into one operation and to own the U.S. stores directly. Still, the code is usually applied rather mechanically in deciding whether a taxpayer is already in a business. Don't let me overstate this. Um, there is a factual issue here. Whether he can be considered to be in the business already. As I see it, that's your main issue. If he's already in the business, then money paid to protect the reputation of the business is deductible. Or maybe he had a loss due to business operations gone sour. If he's not in the business, then there is some relief in Code Section 195 for what are called startup expenditures. But these are limited to $5,000 in the first year, and the rest has to be amortized over the next 15 years. And Section 195 specifically says that startup expenditures are otherwise to be capitalized to the activities they are going to serve. So startup expenditures of $5 million could at best be rateably deducted over the next 15 years at what, $333,000 per year in deductions? Oh, that's not good enough. We have to build a defensible reporting position that the $5 million is not startup expenditure. 
one recent case worries me a little on this point. Do you remember the guy who started the Hard Rock Cafe? Well, he was trying to duplicate his success with a new chain of cafes on a totally different theme. They put their first location at the Atlanta Olympic Games. But if you remember, that year a uh, domestic terrorist set off a bomb in a, in a public space. Well, they had to shut down their flagship cafe. He paid a fortune to cover those losses. The IRS argued successfully that this wasn't even a startup, that it wasn't deductible at all. That can't be right. Well, we didn't quite agree with what the court said either. But we have to look at this case closely and distinguish it. Well, that's what you do, isn't it? So uh, I'll leave it up to you, and uh, we'll look forward to receiving your opinion letter very soon. We will construct the argument, and we'll speak soon. Great, let's do that. Um, Jason, uh, I remember you saying something about coffee. Miss Teschmacher!